Okay, so what we're looking at here today is what we're going to call a chi squared goodness of fit test. And the idea here is to see whether or not our model aligns with the actual population that we're studying. Okay, and this is about a categorical uh Categorical uh, data point. Okay, so um, what I'm going to use as a example for this is going to be uh, birthdays, and we're going to say that the model is that birthdays are uniformly distributed amongst the population. And we're going to break this into buckets. So we're going to take a, um, a sample of 80 people from our population. Okay, and we're going to build four buckets. We're going to say a January to March bucket. We're going to build a April to June bucket. We're going to build a July to September bucket. And we're going to build an October to December bucket. Okay, so we're breaking the year into roughly four quarters. So in order to be able to draw inferencing here, we have to have um, three criteria, right? We have to assume randomness. So we're going to assume that this is a simple random sample. We have to have a 10% criteria. So we're going to assume that my population is larger than 800 here. We also have a large counts criteria, okay? And what large counts is, is that the expected value for the sample, so the expected, is always, for all categories, is greater than 20, okay? Sorry, greater than 5. Expected is greater than 5. So large counts is expected value for all categories is greater than or greater than or equal to five. Sorry, it's at least five. So our expected value here for 80 is that this is going to divide in a quarter, so it would be 20 in each. So we're meeting the large counts criteria. Had we broken this into like months instead of quarters, we may not have uh, mag managed to make that work. Okay, so we take the sample and let's say we get our observed, okay? And our observed list is that there are actually 32 people here, 20 people here, 16 here, and 12 here. And what we want to know is what is the probability of getting this observed sample if this is actually the distribution for the population. Okay, so this is where the chi-squared thing comes in. And where, what chi-squared does is it creates what we call contributions. Okay, so I'm going to go to my next page to kind of work that out. All right, so contributions are um, so contribution to chi squared to the chi squared number is the expected value minus the observed value squared over the expected value. Okay, so like looking at uh, just January to March, right? My expected value for that was 20. My observed value was 32 squared over the expected value. So the expected value again was 20. Okay, so let's get the calculator out here. All right, so my expected value was 20, right? And I'm going to subtract from that uh, let's pretty this up a little bit. We'll use the alpha y equals and make a fraction. There we go. <clears throat> so my expected value is 20. I'm going to subtract from that 32. I'm going to square that and put that over my expected value 20. And this is going to give me 36 over 5, which, okay, fine. Um, why don't I say, hey, switch that. From a fraction to a decimal and that's 7.2 okay so my contribution from this is approximately 7.2 now I would do that for all four of the buckets okay 
and then I get a chi-squared value, which is going to be the sum of the contributions. Okay, so I'm going to add up all those contributions. So I can actually have um, the calculator will actually do that work for me. So the question now is, is what is the probability that this population is going to yield a chi-squared value greater than or equal to mine, right, in a sample of size, this, my sample size is 80, right? So the chi-squared distribution, like the T distribution, has a measure of degrees of freedom. So the degrees of freedom here is going to be um, a number of categories minus 1. Okay, so I think it, in your book it tends to use it as K minus 1. Okay, and if you look at the chi-squared distributions, they tend to be like, like degrees of freedom one is like this, degrees of freedom two is going to be like this, degrees of freedom three is like this. They kind of flatten out as they go along. Um, so, it's kind of, all right, so let's look at what happens with our particular distribution here, right? So I'm actually going to have the calculator do the work here. So let me bring it back up. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to load into my columns here. So let me clear out L1 and clear out L2. I'm going to put my expected values in L1. So there's 20, 20, 20, 20. Putting my observed values into L2, 32, 20, 16. 12. Okay, so to conduct my test, I'm going to start tests, and then I'm going to drive down here to the chi-squared goodness of fit test. And it's going to ask me, where did you put your stuff, right? So my observed are in L2. Okay, I might have did it backwards. My expected are in L1. I have... Um, Four categories, so I would have three degrees of freedom, right? And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to calculate this, right? So there's my 7.2 contribution here, right? So this is the chi squared number, right? So like 7.2, 0, 0 0.8, 3.2. My total chi squared number is 11.2. This is the probability. 0 0.01 that I would hit that chi squared number or greater, right? So my p value there was 0 0.011. Let's call it that. 0 0.011. This is my p value. All right. So what does this mean, right? If my chi squared number is high, right, then, um, the model is bad, right? If the chi-squared number is low, right, then the model is good, right? So let's say my hypothesis, null hypothesis then, should be model fits, right? My alternate hypothesis here is that the model doesn't fit. Right, because if the model fits, I would have um, a low chi-squared number, right? And if the model did fit, so this lines up with my idea that if I make, let's say, alpha 0 0.05, right, and P is less than alpha, right, then I would say that the model, that I, I fail to reject the null, and I believe that the model fits pretty well. If I have P bigger than alpha, right, then I reject the null, and I say that I have sufficient evidence to say that the model does not fit. Now, in this case, I have a 0 0.01, which means for you know, a pretty high level of significance, this, this says that, like, 
the model looks pretty good here, right? So I want to fail to reject the null and say that I don't have sufficient evidence to reject the model, right? So I'm going to go with the model until I have to reject it. So <clears throat> there's kind of your thinking. Um, so you can see how you can get a significance test out of this pretty simply. Uh, note, you know, the degrees of freedom is relatively important to this, and uh, this is going to change the shape of the curve, and you have to meet the initial conditions. But it's a pretty straightforward test to see whether or not, for categorical data, a model actually fits the, the actual population that it's intending to, uh, to speak about. All right? So there you go.